WrestleMania 33 is on Sunday, April 2nd. But it already feels like it's basically April Fool's Day with this WrestleMania. You see, half of the card is like, why the fuck are certain matches even happening? And only half of the card, like, makes sense 100%. Like, there are certain title matches that we want to see, and there are certain title matches, it's like, why is this even happening? And then there are a couple of personal feuds on here, and it's like, it still feels lackluster. Because, it, to be, compared to the past WrestleManias, this just feels like it was just thrown together. And certain matches that were thrown together were like, what the fuck-ish? I, I don't get why there's a mixed fucking tag match with a couple of these people, and I don't understand why there's just a clusterfuck of SmackDown women, and New Day is not even on a fucking main show wrestling. But we'll get to that in a bit. This is my predictions and thoughts of WrestleMania 33. <sighs> Let's just get through this. Listen, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal doesn't really mean anything. I'm sorry. Unless they hype up the next winner as far as being one of the next big things as far as any roster that he is going to be on. I just don't see this having any meaning to it. You have below mid Carters in this match. You have... Giants that don't mean anything anymore in this match. Oh, a former world champion is going to be in the Andre Memorial Battle Royal. Oh, what did he do? It's Mark Henry. Does he have a chance of winning this? Don't think so. I will be surprised if he does. But again, the logical picks in this match are Braun Strowman, Samoa Joe, if he's even fucking in it, or maybe a surprise entrant from NXT. Who knows? Rusev... I don't even think he's even on the card. I think he's injured. I Look, Curtis Axel, do you think that he has a shot? No. Bo Dallas? No. Fucking the Golden Truth? No. Even if the New Day are in it, they still don't have a chance of winning. So, yeah, Braun Strowman should take it. Braun Strowman should be on the main fucking card. This is happening on the fucking pre-show? The fucking pre-show? After the monster year that Braun Strowman had, running through people, you're going to put him in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at the pre-show of WrestleMania. This is why I was saying months ago that Roman versus Braun should have continued on through WrestleMania. At least Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman, okay, we would have been sick of seeing that, but at least it would have gave Braun Strowman at least something positive to do at WrestleMania. Now he's in this fucking Battle Royal. That doesn't really mean anything at all. I'm not, I can't even fucking pick a winner of this unless it's basically Braun Strowman. I don't think Sami Zayn has a chance. Maybe Samoa Joe has a chance if he's in it. Maybe someone from NXT. Maybe some, they'll pick a sleeper winner. Who knows? Mojo Rowley? Come on. Be serious. And if that fucker wins it, I will be greatly surprised. The Usos are even in this thing. Why the fuck are the Usos in it and not defending their fucking tag team titles? America Alpha is in it. I mean, come on, man. This battle royal doesn't mean shit. And I'm just sticking by that. This match should have been on the main fucking card. This pisses me off. Not only that the Cruiserweight Championship... That, look, they tried to make it mean something, and then they're just pushing it off a cliff once again. You have these two talented wrestlers that should be on the main card at WrestleMania. You have Neville and you have Austin Aries. What? Is, is this match just, just going to wake the crowd up? But look, this should be on the main fucking show because this has a potential to be the match of the night. It does. With these two doing moves and going all over the place and flying and stuff like that. And plus, it's kind of personal. And plus, it's for a championship belt. Why couldn't this shit be on the main fucking roster? That really fucking confuses me. I just don't... Oh, God, please. If I'm going to pick a winner here, yes, I'm going to pick Austin Aries. Neville has had a good run with it, but not great. He needs something else, because if he gets past Austin Aries, then what's left for Neville? Seriously, who's going to challenge him for this title? What, are they going to create more failed four ways or eliminations? You know, whatever. But I'm going with Austin Aries on this, and I just hope that 
this is a great match, but again, it should have been on the main fucking card, not the pre-show. The only thing that they did right with this clusterfuck of the match is not to have Nikki Bella in it. Okay, Naomi is back. So she has a chance of winning the championship again, and this time in her hometown, at the show of shows, WrestleMania. But, and here is the real problem here, Alexa Bliss is kind of the mainstay now. There are rumors of a couple of people coming from NXT to the SmackDown roster. And if that happens, that means that Alexa Bliss has to stay champion at that point. But, I mean, this is a difficult one. Okay, let's... let's Okay, Becky Lynch isn't going to win. Uh, I don't see them giving the belt back to her, even though it would be kind of cool to, for have her to have her WrestleMania moment. But I don't see it happening. Natalia, does anyone take her seriously anymore? I sure don't. Carmella, the only way Carmella wins is if James Ellsworth interferes on her behalf or, or something like that. I mean, what? Tyler Breezella is not in it. <laughs> Mickey James is there to put these women over. If she walks out with a title, I will be very surprised. Alexa Bliss can retain. She can sneak up somewhere and get a pin once somebody is knocked out. She stood tall on one occasion holding up her belt when the big clusterfuck brawl was going on. So, I, I, I don't know. It's just... It's just that, again... There should have been, like, a one-on-one -on -one match because this just shows you the lack of everything that this roster has as far as it being SmackDown and the women. They need to do something. They need to do something else, and they need to do something fast. They need to do... I, I don't know. Um, but if I'm going to pick a winner... <sighs> damn, this is kind of difficult because I'm split between... Two people. I'm split between Alexa Bliss and I, you know what? Look, <laughs> the dark horse is Carmella in this match. She is because of James Ellsworth. Maybe this will be the beginning of their breakdown, but James Ellsworth is there for a reason. Please think about that. I could be very wrong with my prediction on this, or any of my predictions, but it's either Alexa or Carmella. I'm sticking with that. The best thing they could have did with this match is to make it the way they did. They turned it into a fucking ladder match. So therefore, everybody can have spots at given moments. Everybody can be doing anything and everything at the same time except for tagging in and out. There's not just going to be two people in the ring at once where all the rest are at bay. No. There's going to be titles hanging and motherfuckers are going to go up there and try to get it. Now look, this, is, this could be the most brutal match of the night if they do it right. And I hope that nobody gets fucked up or injured. Sheamus and Cesaro, I don't think they're going to get the belts. They don't need them. The, the club, okay, Anderson and Gallows. They haven't had a decent run with it, but look at the tag team division as a whole. Them keeping it is a close second. I'm picking Enzo and Cass because the roof will be blown off and a big how you doing chant will happen if Enzo is the one to get these titles. Oh, and Corey Graves wouldn't like that. <laughs> I would love to hear him on commentary if that fucking happens. But I'm going with Enzo and Cass because... I think that WrestleMania is now their time. It wasn't at Fastlane. It wasn't before that. But now, even though Anderson and Gallows could keep it, I'm going with Enzo and Cass on this. They tried their best to make this personal. They tried. And a lot of people are not feeling it. A lot of people are tired of Dean Ambrose, and a lot of people haven't even warmed up to Baron Corbin. I have somewhat warmed up to Baron Corbin because he's been he's been in a couple of main event matches on you know SmackDown Live, and he's done pretty well. He's 
you know, he's okay on the microphone and he's an actual threat in the ring. He calls himself the lone wolf for a reason. I mean, during the Elimination Chamber match, he actually had a fucking good showing. He did. I think this is a time to give him the Intercontinental Championship because they can bolster on the fact that he won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal this year and now he's Intercontinental Champion. They're trying to build him up to be a legit threat as a heel on SmackDown Live and they need that. Dean Ambrose can lose the title and go back to the world title pitcher or fucking around with everybody else that's there on the roster and he will still be, he can still stay the same. He won't even be hurt by this title loss. But Baron Corbin, if he loses his match, there's nothing else for him at this point. They're not going to catapult him to the WWE Championship. They're not going to have him have a partner he's, uh, for a tag team championship or anything like that. He's the lone fucking wolf. So giving Baron Corbin the Intercontinental Championship and having him be established as a threat is the best way to go, and that's my pick for the match. This could be a brutal match. This could be personal. This could actually surprise us to be one of the best matches on this card. We can just wait and see, but anyway, Baron Corbin is my pick for this match, and he's going to win the Intercontinental Championship. Okay, listen, there is no secret that I don't like The Miz. That I'm going to lay that out right now. The only way I see The Miz and Maurice winning this match is if Maurice pins Nikki Bella or makes her submit. That's the only thing I can see. I can't see The Miz pinning John Cena unless there's some type of interference. Somebody will have to come out there. Somebody will have to interfere. Maybe somebody from Raw. Maybe some. Who knows. But I don't see The Miz and Maurice winning this match. For that reason alone. I can see, however, Nikki Bella making The Miz tap out. Or even pinning him. I could see that garbage happening. But, and, and look. This mixed tag, it shouldn't even fucking be a mixed tag. Both of these should be one-on-one -on -one matches. It could have actually meant something. But you got mixed tag, so the Miz can, you know, not do anything or run behind his wife or, like, when he's about to wrestle against John Cena, he could just tag his wife in and tell John Cena to leave, and then the women have to get in there in order to do something. But, yeah, again... I'm picking John Cena and Nikki Bella, and even though I could be 100% wrong, I just hope that I'm not, because again, The Miz and Maurice, they, they mean absolutely nothing on this card. They just don't. Sorry. It's just, yeah, remember, dick licking plus animals equals The Miz. John Cena and Nikki Bella, that's my pick for this match. And it, it's not going to be anything near a fucking classic. This is one of the matches on the card that they actually fucking got right. It's personal. It's for a championship. It's with two fucking people that can actually get it done in the ring. Jericho and AJ Styles last year was undoubtedly the match of the fucking night at WrestleMania. This year, it can be the same thing with Jericho. He can be in a match of the night at WrestleMania versus Kevin Owens. Now, it is pretty much common fucking sense in order to pick... Kevin Owens to win the United States Championship because we know that Jericho is not going to be there for much longer. We know that. But what if Jericho pulls it off? What if he pulls it off? I'm going to go with Jericho on this. This may be stretching it, but I am going to go with Jericho. Maybe he will lose the U.S. title the following night on Raw, either against Owens or Samoa Joe. Maybe it will be a triple threat or a two-on-one, something like that to get the belt off Jericho. But this one-on-one -on -one encounter, I don't think that they're going to take the belt off Jericho at the show of shows. Even though Kevin Owens could take it and it wouldn't be any harm or any foul for, for Kevin Owens to win it. But I'm going with Jericho on here because maybe there will be a swerve. 
this could be the biggest swerve of it, it swerves as far as any WrestleMania because of certain matches that are taking place. But I'm going for Jericho to retain the United States Championship. I just don't know why. But uh, once again, I could be wrong. This is one of the matches that's difficult to predict because you have these four women, the only four women that really fucking matter <laughs> in this match <laughs> for this championship, a fatal four-way elimination. One of the major problems is that they have to get rid of Nia Jax at the beginning, so I don't think you're going to be seeing much of her. Then it comes down to Bailey, Sasha, and Charlotte. They could give it back to Charlotte, but again, if they give it back to Charlotte, that pushes Sasha out of the title picture because there's not going to be any match between those two. Bailey will just go in the back of the line, so to speak, and Nia Jax will not challenge Charlotte. Hmm. They could keep it on Bailey. And the hugger, I don't know. I don't think they're going to keep it on Bailey, honestly. And then there's Sasha. She can end up getting the title. And make a little heelish type of thing, and then she could feud with Bailey for the belt. Or she could talk, cough it up to Nia Jax. Man, but Charlotte winning, that's the biggest monkey wrench in the situation. Because of how talented Charlotte is, and this could just, I don't know, have her catch up more to 16 reigns, just like her father. I, I don't know. The queen of pay-per-view has already lost her pay-per-view streak. But I don't think I don't see her getting pinned or submitted at the show of shows. So now it's difficult, but I'm going to go with Charlotte. Sasha is a close second. Bailey is third, and I don't see Nia Jax winning. Once again, I could be wrong. I just hope these women tear it up in the ring because... These women deserve to put on a great fucking match, even if it is a fatal four-way elimination. It's it's kind of built right, but then again, where else could they have gone? Who are they going to leave out? Were they going to leave Nia out? No. Sha Charlotte? No. Sasha? No. Bailey, she's a champion. So these four women deserve to be in a fucking title match. Now It's more interesting now that it's a four fatal four-way elimination. But, yeah. Just have a good match, ladies, please. Please. All of you are better than The Miz. Please. Okay, look. Interesting as this match may be, this is going to be a traditional wrestling match. AJ Styles has already alluded to that. I'm going to pick AJ Styles because he didn't even get a win at Mania last year. Shane O'Mac doesn't really need a win at WrestleMania. He just needs to earn AJ Styles' respect. Shane showing or having a good showing would actually fucking do that. Shane almost beating Styles would actually earn AJ Styles' respect. And then AJ Styles can go right after the championship that he never got a one-on-one -on -one rematch for. But I, I don't think that this is going to be anything close to a match tonight. However, it's going to be better than a mixed tag. It's going to be better, most likely, than a battle royal. It's going to be, you know, better than Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar, in my opinion. So, yeah, I'm going with AJ Styles. If Shannon Max win, that will be just spitting all over AJ Styles, in my opinion. Yeah, I just... I don't see Shane O'Mac winning because this is a traditional wrestling match. There are no weapons involved. It's not a no DQ. It's not an ambulance match. It's not a no last man standing match. No Hell in a Cell. This is just a, a, not a ladder match. This is traditional. So in order for Shane O'Mac to actually win, AJ Styles has got to take himself out of the equation, and I just don't see that happening. There's not going to be any interference as far as I see, so AJ Styles is my pick for this match.
Listen, in all my years of watching the WWE, there's been only a couple of guys that I feel that has no business being near The Undertaker. The Miz is one of them. Now, Roman Reigns against The Undertaker, the only problem that I have with it is that this is at fucking WrestleMania. Now, the only thing about this match that has any saving grace is that this is not for the fucking streak. But at the same time, Undertaker at WrestleMania is just enough for Roman Reigns not to fucking win. And even not to fucking be in the match. Even Braun Strowman versus The Undertaker and Braun was trying to claim the yard and Undertaker fending it off would have been better. But they didn't fucking do it that way. They had Roman Reigns against The Undertaker. At least Roman Reigns is not in the title picture, but that's besides the point. Look, I'm still going with fucking Undertaker. I am going with fucking Undertaker. I'm not seeing Roman Reigns winning. If Roman Reigns beats The Undertaker at WrestleMania, where does Roman go from there? What, does it get catapulted to the Universal Championship? I, uh, I, look, again, Roman can actually take a loss here, a clean loss, and then just, we're going to boo him, in, we're going to boo him anyway. We're not going to warm up to him anyway. He's not going to outperform. This is not going to be match of the night, as far as I, in my opinion, but no. I just don't see Roman Reigns beating The Undertaker here. Maybe they'll have a fucking rematch or whatever, but no. Just please don't let that fucking happen. Please. Because Roman Reigns would just be lynched. <laughs> I mean, no, dude. You thought him winning the Royal Rumble was bad in the place of Daniel Bryan. Him being the Undertaker at WrestleMania will be most likely grounds of, for this dismissal for certain fans out there. So, yeah. WWE is that stupid though but i'm still going with the undertaker so the son is in a match with a great wrestler and the son-in-law is in a match with a great wrestler that's injured still this match of course yeah we all knew it was coming but now the circumstances are a little bit different because Seth Rollins is injured and now this is a fucking, you know, unsanctioned, you know, they had, look. <sighs> Seth Rollins winning would be a grandstanding for him. But Triple H is Triple H. This is basically going to be the target the leg match. This is basically going to be the struggling to win match, even though I only have one wheel. This is going to be an emotional roller coaster with that being involved. Congratulations, people are interested in this match for those reasons alone. And people want Seth Rollins to win. People want Triple H to lose. People don't want Seth Rollins to get injured. People don't want Triple H to reign supreme and to put Rollins out. So that emotional roller coaster right there is enough. For the match. I wonder what Triple H is going to have for his interest at WrestleMania. That's the only thing that I'm wondering. How is Seth Rollins going to come out? Does he have something up his sleeve? Because that's kind of important. Will Samoa Joe come out and do some interference? Who knows? Or a miscalculation and Seth Rollins get the pin? Who knows? But if I'm going to pick someone to win this match, I am going to go with Triple H. Sorry, that's just me. Seth Rollins could win. But, yeah, due to the circumstances, I'm going with Triple H to win. A couple of questions I have for this match. Will it, ma will it last longer than two minutes? Will it last longer than five minutes? Will it last ten minutes? Will it be better than their matches at Survivor Series and at WrestleMania 20 combined? It's just... Man, I... This is a damn shame, really. I mean, when you look at these two and... I, and it's for the Universal Championship. 
But my opinion is like, okay, it's too late for them to have this match to try to hype up one and try to tear down the other. Because if Goldberg wins, where does he go? If Lesnar wins, where does he go? Who's going to challenge him for the championship? Braun Strowman? Roman Reigns? Or the Money in the Bank ladder match winner is going to cash in on them? Or is it going to be a triple threat with one of them in it? And then, yeah. But I am going with Lesnar. Even though Lesnar could still lose because of his punishment over his wellness policy thing. But I think he's pun got punished enough. I don't think Goldberg is going to be there much longer. I don't think that... No, I, I don't see Goldberg retaining. But I don't... Look, especially if this is the last night, last match on a card, the only flaw that I see is that this is going to be less than five minutes. Or it's going to be two moves or three moves once again. And no one is taking this match seriously. It's just the time has passed for it. Now it's just for the Universal Championship. Damn. Uh, I mean, why couldn't this match be on the fucking pre-show? <laughs> Neville and fucking Austin Aries are going to do more in their match. Yeah. Um, I'm going with Lesnar, but yeah, this match is just screwed up. Yeah, this match is just garbage. WWE Championship, check. Betrayal, check. Personal, check. Two people that can actually get it done in the ring, check. Mind games, check. Look, the only thing that is left is the match itself. I'm going for Bray to retain. I hope he retains. He needs to retain. He does. In my opinion, he does. Randy Orton as champion would go absolutely nowhere. I mean, what? Who's going to challenge Orton? AJ Styles. Oh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If Bray keeps it, at least Ambrose can challenge him. Luke Harper can once again challenge him. I mean, damn. I, I don't know. I want Bray to retain. I, I'm not a, I'm not particularly a Randy, Randy Orton fan, but that's besides the point. Bray needs a longer run than just Elimination Chamber to here. He can have a great run as champion. But, and this is the real problem here, the WWE roster on SmackDown Live doesn't have enough good faces that we can take seriously to challenge Bray. For the championship. It's just... But I'm still going with Bray Wyatt. I'm still going with that dark horse in this match. But, look. This WrestleMania is a big clusterfuck. Those are my opinions and my predictions. I mean, what do you think? I want to know what your predictions are. Who's going to win? Who's going to lose? And why? Who do you want to win? And who do you want to lose? And why? You can agree with me. You can disagree with all my picks. And opinions, you can do that. I welcome debate. I'm always open for a debate when it comes to wrestling. So, those are my predictions. What are yours? And, if you're so kind, hit that like button, hit subscribe. I'm always here doing things about wrestling. Drop kicks, body slams, throw motherfuckers over top rope, both be hitting the floor. Yes, I'm a wrestling fan. This is the theme. And I'll see you later. Credits.